All right, so you can see that we've removed the air over hydraulic jacks that were here. Uh, we've cleaned up our space, got everything out of there, and we've got one of the rings clamped up in place. What we've done is we've got the center location of the ring and one third of the distance across here in order to make sure that we have equidistant spacing on the rams. Now, with that, that actually puts the rams closer to the edge than it does the center. And I'm really hoping that this is actually going to work out really well, that most of our pressing is always going to be here with it weakening towards the ends. So we actually are going to have less material sticking out either side of the ram than we have if we just space them evenly here. I, I hope that makes sense. So instead of having them in thirds, basically they're going to be out like this. That way there's less material overhanging and half the distance in between here, splitting the force of the rams. So we'll hope that works. If that doesn't work and we still get bowing on heavy things, we're going to reinforce this upper piece here uh, with you know probably a piece of I-beam or uh, I got some railroad track, something along the lines there. But for now, we're just going to go with what we've got. So this is clamped to the top, and all we're going to do is drill our holes all the way through. Uh, then we'll go ahead and enlarge them and weld a nut to the backside just to make it easier for subsequent installations. So let's go ahead and get started with some drilling. Change speed. Actually, I'm going to go back to low. That seemed to be better. Getting nicer chips on the lower speed. Boy, having a mag drill would be nice. That's high on the list of things to get next. Okay. So what I want to do here is I want to really mark the holes more than drill them through. We'll get the plate out of the way after we have some, some starters going. There we go. So if you're wondering, no, I don't plan on drilling 3 8 straight through, but this hole, this drill bit fit those holes to be sure that my bolts are lined up center. So now I can pull this down and go through some smaller drill bits in order. So basically I just gave myself a center drill mark, if you will. Just something to help me locate those holes for the next bit. There we go. Bolt and hole. Perfect. I think that's it. So I got the other one to do. I'm not going to record that. It's just doing the exact same thing again. So after we get the other four holes drilled to match the mounting plate, then we go back to the welding table to weld it all back together again. Okay, there you go, four holes for a mounting plate. Uh, we're gonna do the other side just exactly the same. I'm not gonna record that because it's exactly the same thing. But once we have those four holes in, we're gonna take the plates back over to the welding table and weld together the mounts and come over and get the actual hydraulic rams mounted to here. 
get them plumbed in, and we'll be ready for a test really soon. The only thing left to build is the extension jack shaft that goes from the ram to the top of the press. Okay, so we've got our holes drilled in the uh, frame, and now it's time to go ahead and weld our plate on and um, go ahead and really final assembly, thank God, finally. So what I've got here is a big, thick chunk of plate that is used for another project that I haven't started yet, but because this table is not flat on the edges, it's only flat in the middle, I did not weld this table, somebody else did. They overwelded it, warped all the edges. Okay, because it's not flat, that's why I have this big chunk of plate here to give me a flat location. We're gonna use our one, two, three blocks and a square to make sure that our pipe is perpendicular at all times, okay? So this one is pretty good. When I spin it in all directions, it seemed pretty good. There's a few areas where it might be off a, tat, a tad. We'll give it a tap if need be. But the most important thing is that our, ah, come here. That the most important thing is that our vent, our, sorry, our port lines up. There we go. So we've got our port lined up. We're gonna go ahead and make sure we're down flush everywhere. Okay, we're gonna check the first edge, and then we're gonna put a nice heavy tack right there. And then we're gonna check the other four corners to be sure that this is perpendicular, and then we'll be able to put more weld on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my welding gear. And I'm putting the uh, jacket on for this one because I've burned up my forearms enough. <coughs> okay, here we go. Okay, so this is only so we can get above the uh, plate. And we're gonna check this piece for perpendicular. And it's a little out, let's give it a tap. These don't need to be perfect, but I wanna avoid the ram going crooked if at all possible. So here we go, we'll put a nice tack in there and just one tack. That way we can still move left, right, front and back to square up the other pieces. There we go. Okay, that needs to come this way a little bit. That's good. Check the opposite one, because once we get two in, they're basically gonna be locked in. So, that's good. And that one could use to go back the other way a little bit. There we go, double check our other two once again. Good. Good. Okay, put that aside and we'll tack the other one.
And remember, this is just gonna hang and the only, the only force on this is the weight of the ram. There we go. Now we're gonna be able to cut this out and cut this out, then assemble and weld the rings on top with the cylinders being used as the offset for the ring height. So I'm gonna go over to the cutting station and cut these out and be right back. All right, here we are back from grinding. And now we can do the final assembly, fitment, um, put the rings on, the whole deal. And then we'll be able to take the cylinders out and finish weld everything. So let's go ahead and get our cylinder here. Make sure we're clear. We wanna have a nice flush bottom. Our cylinder goes over like this, right down over our fitting. There we go, see nice great fit right there. And we take a ring and we just drop a ring in the top. And then we just kind of give it a little bit of weld and that's it. These would be ready to mount after this. And doing it this way, what this does is it ensures that when the cylinder is mounted, because remember it goes upside down, this is upside down right now, it's gonna go the other way, that everything on this base will be flush against the beam. So everything will be drawn up snug right against the beam. So we'll do this, and we made the rings large enough that the piston can get out easily without issue. There we go. Okay, now you see I've got quite a bit of gap here. That's because we had to expand that pipe, make it a little larger to fit around the cylinders. Remember earlier in the video series. So not a big deal though. I mean, again, all this is doing is holding up the weight of the cylinder. Those tacks are sufficient. I'll probably go through and put a few more uh, deeper tacks in. I just didn't, um, didn't really do anything too heavy here. I really just wanted to get it set so it wouldn't warp in one way or the other. So once that's cooled off, we'll put some other tacks in and then we're going to go back over to the press and put all of this together. All right, so here we are. We have the uh, cylinder mount. We've got a prop just to give us the extra distance that we need where we're going to be extending the cylinder ram as the very final aspect of this project. And that's relatively simplistic. It's basically cutting a piece of pipe, putting some ends on it, and uh, locating it on the beam. So pretty straightforward stuff. What we're doing right here though, is uh, we're gonna use the cylinder to lift itself into place. It's partially extended right now. You can see the ram down here. So we're gonna let that cylinder lift itself into place, and then we'll be able to lift the housing right to where it needs to go and then we don't have to lift up this big heavy cylinder. So these hydraulic fittings are really neat. If you haven't used a quick coupling for hydraulics before, uh, it's really neat. And these are designed this way because um, these are used for lifting houses, bridges, uh, all sorts of things. So these actually can stay pressurized. As you can see right now, I mean, it's, it's pressurized now. The ram is extended, okay? So under 10,000 PSI, you can actually disconnect these and leave this supporting the load. Now, you gotta be careful with that because if this fails, the load is gonna fail. But what's really neat is the lines stay full of oil. They prevent air from entering the system. Uh, so it's really a nice system with a quick coupler. You will get a little bit of air, but one of the reasons I did the design this way, um, first of all, I didn't want the cylinder, the actual body of the ram moving up and down because that means the line would be moving up and down. And that's extra wear, extra force, extra everything. So I didn't want to do that. So what I did is I hung them this way. So now these are going to be fixed in place, which means the lines get fixed in place. So we're good there, but also air goes up. So as we get air in the system and these extend and then retract, the air will go to the top and purge down the back of the line all the way out of the system. So it's gonna be a self-purging system when it's done. Okay, so enough about that. Let's go ahead and get this connected. There we go. And we've got our pump down below the camera. It might be touching the camera. You might get some vibration, we'll see here. Okay. And again, another really neat part, 10,000 PSI system, hand tight fasteners. That's just great. All right, here we go. That should be enough to get 
out of the way to allow us to line this up. Oh, might need to come down a little bit. Take a little pressure out of there. There we go. Now they're supposed to be uh, self-retracting and they're not yet. I don't know why. I'm wondering if it's because they haven't been lubricated by enough oil. I don't know. Um, but uh, these springs ought to help that. There we go. And then I hit the retraction. And I don't know. We'll have to find out why. But let's put something in here and press that down and see if our retraction does indeed work. We don't want to crush anything. I just want to see if it retracts. Okay, we're down. Yep, our springs are definitely bringing our pistons back in, so we're all good. All right, so we're going to go ahead and mount the second one and uh, move some lines out of the way and a few other things, and our press will be ready for testing. Here you can see what we've been referring to as the back side of the press uh, where we've been doing all of the work. We've got our hydraulic pump, our manifold is right over here, and our lines are here. We have yet to, you know, affix them to the sides. There's a couple of little steps to do. And of course, our cylinders are installed. We're going to go to the front side in a minute and look at how we did that. It's very simple. I didn't make video footage of just that part, but I want to show you what makes them up in case somebody wants to do this same thing. So what we're going to end up doing is mounting our manifold to here and moving our lines out of the way. That way anything long that comes through doesn't impact the lines, uh, but I wanted to show you the completed system here. So we're going to go around the front and show you some of this in, uh, in action. We're going to bend some metal and show you what we can do here. So let me get to the other side, uh, finish the wrap up on explanation and then go into the demo. Okay, here we are on the operator side of the machine. So, of course, you see you know, the opposite view here. We've got our cylinders mounted. Uh, here's our shaft extensions. And we have the actual press extended downward somewhat. What we're going to do is extend it downward all the way and then let the cylinders retract so I can pull one of these out to show you. There we go. And to hold this in place and let them retract, we're just going to put some welding clamps on here temporarily. Okay, and this is for nothing else than to uh, keep the spring stretched so the pistons can retract without the, um, the actual brake going up. This is how maintenance would be performed if I needed to change something out for a cylinder, work on it, anything like that. And that's also how I installed the shafts that we're about to take a look at. Okay. Now, retraction speed on these cylinders, they are self-retracting. There's a spring inside that pulls the ram back up. Retraction speed is really, really slow. All right, so that's a drawback. Um, what I think it is, though, is I think it's the relief valve in the hydraulic pump. I think it's a needle valve, and it's allowing fluid to retract, but at such a slow rate that uh, it just takes forever for these to retract. So I might address that in the future if it gets to be annoying. Um, and I think they do that for safety, assuming that these might be supporting a heavy load. And if somebody were to accidentally step on the pedal, they wouldn't want that heavy load to go down quickly. So even though there is a uh, valve to allow the pressure to bleed off, I believe that's exactly what it is. It's just a bleed. I would prefer a much more open uh, valve for this. So if I can get in there and expand that orifice, I might just do that. But let's go ahead and retract these. And I'll have to fast forward this because this does take a while. Okay, there we go. We've removed enough pressure 
to allow one of these to slip out, I think. Let's see. Oh, no, might need a little bit more. Okay. I'll show you why that is in just a moment here, as soon as we get one of these out. Let me see which one is. There we go. Okay. So in here is this insert that came with the pumps. And this has a ball detent in it. You can see it right there. So it snaps into a ring in the top of the ram. So that ball detent holds this in, and this distributes the pressure over the surface of the piston uh, instead of you know, allowing it to punch in the middle. So we took the front of this, and I machined it down. So I put a step in there that fits inside the pipe. Okay? Uh, this is going to get tack welded around here. And on the bottom, we're going to take a ring, and we're going to put a ring around this piece here and just weld that in place. That way this cylinder can't kick out should anything ever twist or go out, you know, out of dimension here. But that's really uh, what I did. Uh, these were thrown in the lathe and they were cut to the same length and made sure that the ends were both parallel and perpendicular so we get a nice straight down push. So let me go install these back in. And again, this is how I would do maintenance in the future. There we go. Get those in and just push it back down. There we go. Okay, let me get the clamps off and then we'll do some bending here. Okay, so we've got our clamps removed, and now you'll see this is going to retract just a little bit faster because this time on retraction we have the springs on both sides as well as the lift springs helping push everything back up instead of just the internal spring, but it is still very, very slow. So you can see that if you had to repeatedly do a large number of bends, this could really add up this amount of time here. Uh, it takes far longer to retract than it does to, uh, to go in, which is what leads me to believe it's actually the valve for retraction that's doing that. But while that's happening, let me show you here. I have here a, a piece of 5 16th steel. It's a piece cut off an angle, and we're just going to throw that in for a bend. Uh, it should be no problem at all. So let me go ahead and get this in here as soon as we're perpendicular. I'm not worried about the bend quality right now. I haven't adjusted uh, or even added any of the internal... If you're familiar with these, this is a piece of angle iron inside, down in there, right, sitting like this, and you stack in smaller and smaller angle iron uh, for these smaller gauge and tighter bends. So for this, uh, we're going to simulate as if we had to make a motor mount bracket or some other relatively thick piece of steel that needed to be bent. Okay, so let's go ahead and we got that one in there. Actually, let me move this so you can see the bending from the side. All right, and here we go. Here's our piece. You see it's loose in there still. Let's just go ahead and give it a bend. There we go. We've got our bend. Let me see what our pump says. <laughs> our pump doesn't even have a thousand PSI right now. It's a 10,000 PSI pump. These cylinders were barely even working. I don't mean functionally. I mean, it was barely even putting a load on them to get that bend. Look at that. That is actually a pretty decent bend. Oh, look, at we even got a crease inside. That's how much force was going in there. We creased the uh, interior piece. So that's not bad force-wise. A 5 16 piece bent that easily. All right, so let's step it up. Um, live, I haven't done this before, so I got this piece of half inch scrap. Let's see if we can uh, bend some half inch. There we go. Just wanted to be sure we were far enough on both sides that when it pushes down into the V, there was enough material left. So, all right, here we go. Well, it wouldn't bend it, but it definitely sheared it. Holy, let's see what we got here. 
Okay, we did round off the front of that, that tooth right there. Boy, I never tried bending anything that thick, quite honestly, and especially a piece that small. Uh, but it had the force to, to do it. The steel just couldn't take it. That was pretty surprising. All right. I'm going to have to mill all those teeth now and <laughs> put them back in order. Uh, but we know that we're not going to try bending a piece of half inch on here. Um, it, it's just too sharp of a bend for something. Had I put a diameter in here, um, you can make dies that allow you to do that with rounded surfaces so you're not fo focusing all that stress. Here's how far we bent before the material yielded. Okay. So that's pretty good. Um, it definitely has the power to bend anything I'm going to need to bend in here, and anything that practically would be bent. So, all right, so that's a win. All right, let's go ahead and reposition, and we're going to talk about some of the pluses and minuses of this design here. Okay, here we are. So we've got enough power to bend our uh, 5 sixteenths, and that did a pretty good job. We saw when we stepped up to the half inch that that caused a failure of the material. A more radius die instead of that sharp tooth would have allowed this to bend in a normal curve. There's, there's a minimum radius for bending things. You can look it up. But, uh, so there's that. Um, it did cause a little damage to one of the fingers uh, where we bent the half inch. It rounded the edge of it. So I'll have to put all of them in the mill and probably, you know, replane them all in the same orientation again. Uh, so there's that. Uh, it has plenty of power to do everything we need. Uh, the retraction speed is a bit slow, but again, I believe that is a built-in safety factor. I'll probably modify that particular valve uh, on this machine to allow these to retract faster if it becomes an irritation in the future. And I probably would have, if I were to do this again, take these cylinders and clock them a little bit so the hoses on the back were at more of an angle, just to make hose management a little easier and make it a little thinner profile overall so it can tuck away into a corner easier. But um, it's got plenty of strength. It's going to be able to bend anything we need in the shop, I'm pretty sure. And anything beyond this, I'm going to have to send out to a large bender anyway, uh, just out of sheer width. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to bend a four-foot, half-inch plate on here. Uh, that, there, that was never any intention. But it needed to be strong enough to bend motor mounts and other sort of structural mounting brackets, which definitely we can do. So it's all good. Uh, the only thing left to do is weld these rings on and then weld a ring around the bottom here that keeps this from kicking out under pressure if anything should ever go out of alignment. So there's that. I'm not welding these to here. Uh, that's why I want a ring. I want some movement that if I welded them right to here and it were to go out of alignment, it would probably just break the welds and still kick this out. So if I put a ring around it that's welded into place, we don't have that direct pressure on the weld and it keeps the cylinder more, uh, more safely contained. So. All right, if you guys have any questions on any of the components, where I got them from, what I did it, with it, how the decisions were made, calculations, all those things, go ahead and please ask them below. I'd love to hear from you guys and uh, hear your feedback on our 100-ton press. All right, thanks for watching and have a great day.